Okay. The chat is disabled. Sorry. Okay. So, um, we uh, have to close the, um, the, the topic so, uh, that we started last week uh, concerning the uh, human centered design processes, uh, where the um, we will see um, actually how to turn into something uh, that can be engineered in a process it being seen inside design process so inside the software engineering process basically uh, several of you have made a, a, a software engineering course where you see that uh, every uh, end result every product needs to be managed through a, a well-defined process and how to integrate uh, uh, usability into this process well first of all we need to understand what do we mean by usability we will spend a lot of uh, of time in this course in trying to understand this concept basically uh, because usability is not just a single measure okay it's the combination of uh, uh, many different points of view many different di di dimensions uh, for so for example um, how well uh, in general usability try, tries to measure how well the users can use uh, the functionalities offered by your system so it's not about how much functionality do you have it's uh, rather how much the users feel comfortable and uh, um, in, and and efficient in using the system, and actually this can be seen from several points of view. So what is uh, uh, what could be hinder? Could what could be make uh, this uh, interaction of the user with the system uh, bad? Uh, so what is the opposite the opposite of usability? Uh, I don't use your system or I find your system difficult to use or not interesting enough to use because, because maybe it's not useless. Uh, so usefulness is one dimension of usability. The system should provide some uh, value to the user. I'm spending some time in using your system because it benefits me, okay? Because it, this, with the system, I am doing something that I care because the system is helping me doing something I'm interested in. Okay, I'm stressing this point uh, uh, also because you are start, starting to think about your projects uh, that you will develop during the course. Uh, and too many times, uh, uh, as also you, Luigi said in, in the chat, uh, too many times uh, uh, you, we tend or you tend to start uh, from the features of the system. Okay, uh, but we are not wizards. You cannot read the, the user's minds. Okay. Uh, we cannot uh, say, uh, okay, a good system is a system that has these three features. But are, are we sure that these features will be useful for the user? Or are we asking the wrong question? The question should not be what are the features that the system should possess. But the question is, uh, what are the useful um, um, characteristics of a system that will really help the user? doing something they want. So the real question, one step, one step back, is uh, what do system, what do people want? What, is, what are the needs of our people? OK, this is a starting point. If a, a system is perfect, clean, nice, efficient, and so on, but nobody uses it because it doesn't solve any real problem, then it's not usable. No. If it's not used, it's not use, usable. Uh, and the second dimension is learnability, OK? Is it easy to learn? So when I open the application, when I open the website, can I start working? Can I start producing something useful right away? Or do I need to study some manuals or try and then change? And then uh, I still need to spend some time in learning how the system is working. So the ease with, by which I can uh, stop spending my time in learning the system and they can start uh, exploiting the work of the system for um, saving me time. Hmm? Um, memorability is uh, another dimension where after I learn the system, can I remember easily how it worked? So do I have to learn it again from scratch every time? Or once I learned, it's okay. It's entered in my mind, and can I use it? I can use it very, uh, very easily. Okay, especially for systems that we are not going to use every day. Huh? 
uh, where you know you're refreshing constantly the the, the, the actions by the system um, well uh, in that case uh, uh, we may spend some time between different uh, usages of the system and so when we connect again maybe next month will it be will i remember what i learned the first time i used this website or the application or i don't remember i need to learn it one, once again okay and so what uh, what, uh, and this also is is linked to how well we can fix uh, in our mind uh, what we are learning um, effectiveness actually is uh, um, linked to usefulness uh, where uh, we want the website to be useful and useful means it's, it's helping me in something that they want to do and it really helps it helps me so at the end of the interaction i reached my goal if i go to a bank uh, a teller machine and they want to uh, draw uh, 100 euros at the end do i have the 100 euros in my in my hand or not okay uh, do I uh, reach my goal, my interaction goal, or not? Uh, uh, and of course, the, the answer should be yes. Okay, I should be uh, able to complete the task that I want to do. It's not the task offered by the system. It's the task that I want to do. Uh, the efficiency measures uh, the how fast it is to use the system. So uh, for reaching a given task, does it take 20 clicks or only five? Does it take uh, five minutes or only 30 seconds? Okay, with the, with the same goal, how fast, how efficient I am in terms of time, in terms of number of interaction, clicks or taps or swipes, in terms of... Um, of effort that they spend in interacting with the uh, with the website. Remember that the effort is also trying to you know, cross the gulf of uh, of evaluation uh, every time we interact with the system. So it it is uh, it's something that we spend energies for. Okay. Uh, one aspect, of course, of the of the gulf of evaluation that I just mentioned is the visibility of the system state. So. Uh, having a uh, interacting with a system where in at every time I see what the system is doing and I see what are my options for interacting with the system and this makes everything much easier and much faster uh, and it reduces the possibility of errors hmm? uh, so uh, every time a user makes an error we categorize them as errors and slips you remember last time uh, something which is not expected it's something that uh, you know, uncovers some design problems on the system and at the same time slows the efficiency, uh, lowers the effectiveness, um, creates some problems of learnability because the user was maybe convinced that this was the right options and then it discovered it isn't. So it needs to learn again or learn in a different way how the system is behaving, okay? So the one possible measure uh, of uh, the usability of the system, but it's only one, it's not the one, uh, is uh, whether the user are making errors in interacting with the system, are clicking on the right, on the wrong place, okay? Uh, and finally, satisfaction. So something that maybe also can be um, you know, enjoyable to use, nice to use uh, uh, from, a, from an aesthetic point of view or from just the, uh, you know, um, the, the interaction point of view, something that it's not something sad or uh, you know boring. Uh, should you, we should try to make interaction also more and enjoyable uh, for the everyday users? Okay, so these are some or the most important uh, dimensions of usability. Uh, we should also always ask ourselves this kind of question, trying to okay when we. Um, I'm saying this especially for the work that you are going to do in the lab on Thursday. When we open our web website, uh, we have a first impression whether it's right or not. Okay, uh, something that for which we say this is a, a good website, it's well done, and this other is difficult to use, uh, it's not very usable. Okay, for trying to understand better what we how to describe actually this this, this feeling, uh, one possibility is to try to 
try to break it down into some categories. We will learn much more precise ways of doing this kind of analysis, but for the moment, I think that this kind of attributes here will help us in trying, okay, uh, it's difficult because I always forget where to go, okay? Or it's not usable because it's slow, or it's not useful because actually you need to do a lot of, enter a lot of data that is really not useful, okay, for me, for me. Hmm? I'm not asking whether the data is useful for them. Hmm? Usability is always a, a measure for the users, okay, never for the system. And uh, uh, like the, um, uh, so there's a, we have a question from Dario that says, uh, uh, if the user uses our, our application for the first time, we can show in some sort of, of guided tour. Yes, of course, it's a way of helping the learnability. Um, and it's a sign that probably the learnability is not that good because we need to explain it or is it something that should be done to, in a way to avoid the user confusion. Uh, of course, the, the, the truth uh, is, is in the middle, okay? Um, some functions of the use of the website should be easy to use without any kind of learning path. So usually uh, learning can be done in addition. So may you have some help, maybe systems where the user can, if the user doesn't understand, it knows where, where to click to have more information. Um, uh, in some cases, there are some functions that are not so immediate and they they need some kind of guided tour or something like that. Usually, um, I have two examples in mind. One is video games. Video games are usually very complex. They, you, you need to control a lot of comments uh, and very quickly and a lot of situations. And how do they teach you to use the video games? You don't read a manual. You don't memorize a list of comments. They will introduce them one by one step by step, level by level. So in level one, you only have to walk. And then in level two, you can you learn to jump. Of course, you already could jump in level one, but you didn't need it. And so you didn't need to, um, to learn that movement. And so you learn a uh, bit by bit when, the, uh, when, um, when you have more needs, actually, okay? And so in a normal uh, web application or normal uh, application uh, in which you want to interact, uh, we could also try to exploit this, this approach. Start simple, and if the users need something more, open them possibilities of going to something deeper. So we start with a simple interface, and then you have a click, a, bu a button for expanding a section, an advanced functions, something where you can go and find more. Okay, three buttons that you can click to see more details and something. Some small hints that tell the, the user if you are more experienced, if you want to do more, we have it. Go there, and of course you can expect some more complexity. In that case, you were asking to enter that area and then you are prepared also to get some training, okay? But uh, I would not uh, uh, do the guided tour just the first time you open a, web a website because you are not investing in making your website simpler. You are trying to wa waste my time, okay? Uh, thinking I'm stupid and teaching me things that maybe I only need to answer and they need, I need to learn them because you were too lazy to make the website easy to use. This is my impression. You can do that when you are making steps up. The second uh, thing that came to my mind is uh, when a, a big application, you know, on Facebook or the Google or whatever, they change something or they add some new functionality. And so basically they bring something at you the first time you connect and say, okay, look, there's something new here. Do you want an explanation? Do you want me to guide you through the new functionality or not? So they are inviting you to explore more. Then it's up to you whether to follow the guided tour, let's say, so to say, or to just explore it on yourself, on your own. Uh, yes, yeah, so all new functionalities that are deployed on a large scale, usually today, first they want to get them noticed, especially if they behave differently from, from, from before, or if they introduce a, a, new, a new kind of complexity in the mental model of the user. It's not just one more button. No? It's more uh, learning that the system is more complex than it appears to be 
uh, before. Okay, and so you need to actually to be prepared to see something new. So uh, it's not, it's not. Of course, the the answer is never easy, uh, but uh, we should always always try for them. Okay. Um, no problem. And um, and I think that the the shorter summary found for usability, I already mentioned it last time, is the title of, of a book that was called "Don't Make Me Think." Okay. So actually, uh, just. Picture yourself in front of any applications. You open the application, and uh, are you starting to use application right away, or are you thinking before you select something or click on some button? Are you asking yourself, uh, "What is this? What's the meaning of this information? Is this element clickable or not? Uh, what, what will happen if I click on this element?" So if in your mind you are asking yourself these questions, then you are widening the gulf of execution and also a part, uh, also a part of the gulf of evaluation. Because between what you want to do and how you do it actually, there is, you have to answer these smaller questions and they distract you. You don't feel you know, fluent in the, uh, like say in video games, uh, if you have to think about which button do I need to press you will lose, you will never play and you never have fun in that. Only when the action is natural enough that you are doing that without thinking, then you feel that you are not interacting with an interface, but you are interacting with the functionality which is behind the interface. The interface is something that is in between and we want to make it disappear as much as possible. The user should not feel that uh, uh, it needs to learn the interface. The user should feel like he's interacting with the core of the system, with the state of the system. And the interface is just something like, you know, when you are speaking to someone in your, in your own language, you don't need to think about the words, just the concepts get to you. If you're speaking to someone in a language that you don't understand very well, then you need to first think about the words and then interpret them. And it's an extra step and it's very, very um, energy consuming, okay, for your brain. And the same goes here. So always, if you if you feel that you are stopping even for half a second, 200 milliseconds uh, before doing some action or before understanding what uh, what something in the screen is, is is meaning is trying to tell you, then you have a problem. You have an obstacle that you can remove. Okay. So the goal is to have have the user reach their goals without thinking. And how would you how can we reach this goal? Uh, of course, we try. We should try to set up some some process, and uh, with the many different steps from the initial specification of the system down to the final implementation, right? And uh, which is any, any soft any software system is designed this way, um, and uh, throughout the design process, and this is sort of a let's say a very simplified waterfall process for for. Um, uh, for a software system, uh, going from a specification uh, to the analysis, design, and implementation, very classical waterfall model, but just to, to, to highlight it. Uh, um, at each step of your design process, we will and we will want to inject some usability related uh, activities. So we are enriching our uh, software development process with extra activities to ensure that the final result will meet our usability goals. And so uh, the first question, what is wanted and uh, what are the needs of the user that we are trying to solve, uh, of course, can be, uh, can come from many different, uh, say, requirement documents, but we can add uh, the information coming from the users themselves. Hmm? Um, through and these uh, interviews and ethnography and so on are some possible tools, instruments uh, that we can use uh, at, this, at this, that stage in the process. And then we can analyze uh, the, the functionality of the system through, for example, the usage or the definition of scenarios, uh, task analysis, uh, uh, activity, and so on. So these are the names uh, of the things or the techniques that we are going to learn during the course. And we are going to apply them to our project. So actually, this is the process that we, it's not just a, 
an hypothetical project process is more or less the process that we are going to follow during the next uh, 13 weeks. Okay. And these uh, activities, some of them we will only so say, learn them, and some of them we will apply, apply them actually in our project and will be part uh, of the deliverables and, uh, and of the exams. And of course, at, at, at every step, uh, we have different uh, type of techniques that will apply, of course, because we are progressing uh, through, through the implementation. Um, so we, are, uh, we need to learn several techniques and methods uh, and metrics also, uh, so evaluation metrics, uh, to be injected, uh, to be added uh, to every, to different uh, steps of our design phase. Uh, by the way, one very important uh, uh, ingredient here in this picture is the existence of prototypes. We will spend some time, uh, some time describing them, which are incomplete versions of the systems uh, that can be used for testing and evaluating them with the users. Okay, uh, why is that? Well, because uh, correcti correcting errors uh, in the final version is usually very late and very costly, very expensive. So we want to uh, detect uh, errors, usability errors, uh, early enough, as early as possible. And for, so for doing that, uh, uh, like uh, you know, you are doing unit testing for trying to detect uh, programming errors early enough in the development, uh, uh, we need uh, some kind of techniques uh, to detect some usability errors uh, early enough uh, before too much time is spent in implementing a functionality in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And so we need to, to build extra, uh, say, throwaway prototypes uh, uh, that are built just for validating the user interface. Um, and so all these steps uh, are more or less the steps uh, that we are going to follow in this course, uh, as I mentioned. So first of all, what do we want? What is exactly needed by the users? How are people currently accomplishing the goal? Never forget that we are not uh, uh, colonizing a new planet, okay, uh, where there's nothing there. We are offering a new software product or a new device to some people for helping these people do some tasks, execute some tasks that they were already doing. They were already doing it by hand or with the help of some other device or some other software. Okay, so first of all, I need to see, to learn how they are doing their task today to be able to offer them a new or a better way of doing that task. Okay, it's not uh, I'm, if I am ignoring what the user are doing today, then I will present them something that we, which is too different, too distant from their habits, uh, from their customs, that they will never be interested in that. And we do that through observing and speaking with the users. Okay, you cannot imagine what the user wants. Every time you think that you know what your user is wrong, slap yourself, please because uh, what we think about the user is always wrong, okay? Uh, we, not, we need to uh, extract this information from the user, and there are different techniques for doing that. And the first chapter, let's say, of this course will be need finding, which is exactly this. Techniques for learning from the users what they actually want, hmm? what they actually need, need slash want, depends on the case. At this point, uh, we extract the information and we need to formalize it and structure it because of course the user will give you a lot of information, a lot of unstructured information and you need to say, okay, I, I will not solve every problem in your life. Huh? I, I will select some tasks that they want, they will, that I will make better, some activities that they will try to support with my system. And so we need to, um, let's say, analyze better some specific scenarios, some specific actions um, among all the possible needs of the user. We, 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 we funnel it down. So imagine something that you are starting very large, very generic, and you are trying to make, to make it uh, uh, narrower, and, uh, and, but more precise. And so we develop scenarios, we are developing uh, uh, case studies, uh, we are de developing interaction stories, and so on, by which we can compare uh, what is the current way of uh, executing an activity 
uh, with the new way that will be provided by uh, our system, basically. And uh, um, this comparison can be done by us during the development phase, but also you usually will try to involve also the users in this comparison, okay? So that the user can see uh, how differently they could solve the problem and they can give you feedback uh, for you to make it even better for them. And then we have uh, started from that, we have the more engineering steps. Okay, once we understood uh, what we want to do, how we do that, what are the steps, what are the, the, um, uh, the type of interfaces, the type of, uh, uh, of paradigms uh, uh, that we are going to offer to the user, um, we, we design the system. Uh, so we decide uh, the layout, the colors, uh, the web page, the icons, uh, uh, the buttons, uh, the menu structures, and everything that compose the applications. Um, these are design phases, but each of these design phases should be in some way informed by the users. Of course, we, are, we don't need to have a user telling us, uh, make it a bit lighter, but make it a bit smaller and so on. Okay, we, but uh, uh, we need to design in a way that we can take into account uh, how the users will uh, uh, perceive our system, we'll see our system, how the user will interact with that. Uh, sometimes we will do that uh, by doing some user experiment, by involving the real users, but in many other times uh, uh, we can just rely on liter the literature, on good practices. Okay, we know how everybody reacts to the button. Okay, if you have two buttons called OK and Cancel, people are used to those and you know, we know already how they work. If uh, you level two buttons with, with strange names uh, saying yes and please, uh, okay, the people are getting confused. So is please a, a synonym for yes, please, or for no, please? Okay, it's a it's wrong choice. Uh, you don't need to make a user study to understand that labeling please a button with the please label is a wrong choice. Hmm? You just have to copy what the others are doing. You just have to use uh, the, maybe the default buttons, buttons that are in your, in your graphical toolkit, because they, these were designed after years of experience. Okay, so in a way, we, during the, our design, we have a lot of information, guidelines, best practices, examples, and so on, that will help us doing the right thing uh, if we don't want to invent uh, something totally new or totally different. And of course, uh, uh, after applying all these rules that we need to learn while we design, uh, or after learning all these rules, of course, uh, uh, we need to involve the users uh, uh, with some prototypes. So we are building something. I try to follow all the good practices, all the good rules of design, of say, usability design, uh, but I will never show, be sure that the, what the, my final result will be understandable by the users. And then uh, I can test what I did with the users but I need to test it before it's finished because it will be too late uh, when it's finished and it will be too complex to modify it uh, in some way. Uh, and that's why uh, during the design phase, uh, we are uh, generating one or more prototypes which are incomplete versions of the system. So if you imagine you were uh, you know, mentioning the YouTube comments, for example, in, uh, in your chat, um, we can test several types of comments. You don't need to implement everything, the backend, all the synchronization of the comments. Uh, you don't need to even put real comments in there just to test the interaction, whether the user will like it or will understand them uh, when, when you move them, for example, from one position to the other, like it happened with YouTube. And uh, um, so you create something which is incomplete on purpose. We don't need all the functionality. We only need the, inform the functionality that will impact in some way the interaction with the user. We implement that part and we test with some users. We test in presence, we can test uh, uh, online, we can just throw some of the modification. If you have a big uh, user base, you can, you can do this uh, A-B testing where you online, you have two, very, two slightly version of the system and you see which one performs better. There are many, many ways of using uh, prototypes at different levels of maturity uh, for extracting information. Huh? Basically, you are always measuring how well the users are using my system. 
and always keep in mind that this, this is not a measure of the users. You are me not measuring, are my users good? You are always measuring, is my system good enough to make my user more performant? Hmm? And uh, okay, finally, we have the implementation phase, but we hope at this stage that uh, everything has been already you know, um, taken into account before in the, in the iteration uh, steps before. And you should not be too um, uh, worried of needing to go back and redesign something. So if you are applying this process early enough, uh, um, you will discover your errors, your problems, your mistakes uh, uh, at an early stage when you only have a prototype and the prototype may be, maybe you put it together in two days. So you are not wasting two months of development. In the first two days, we built a prototype, you discovered an error, okay, and then you change the specification and you will implement a system that will perform better after two months when it's completed. So we are actually trying to simplify the design process. And uh, if you are trying to uh, apply these ideas in general into software processes, you know that there are many software processes and the software engineers uh, guys are fighting each other over which process is better. I will not enter this fight. I'm not interested in that. Uh, the, the general rule is that uh, whatever your software design process is, uh, usability is always a step ahead. So before every step in your design process, you should think about usability. So before user requirement, before implementation, before testing, before deployment, and so on. Uh, so the idea is that before every design step, before every implementation step, you need a user-centered step. And depending on what you are doing and which stage is your project, this user-centered step will be a measure of usability, will be an experiment with some user, will be the exploration of alternative solutions to see which one better fits with the users and so on. And this will not add significantly to the cost of development because usually this user, all this user center step that you are adding to your process basically uh, are very cheap. No, they only count in days, not in months or weeks uh, of work. And you, don't, you usually don't need, and we'll see that uh, with numbers, uh, you don't need to involve uh, 1000 people for for doing a user study. Maybe you need five people, three, three persons, four or five, these numbers, okay? That all will already give you a good feedback to improve your, your system. Of course, these five people should not be your five developers, okay? Remember that developers are not human beings in the normal way. And so they interact very differently with, with, uh, with systems. So you should always, uh, speak and use with the real users, not with what developer thinks that user will like. Again, slap your hand because it's wrong. Um, and so the critical decision point will be, uh, will be uh, dealt sooner in the project and so will cost less basically. Um, okay, I, uh, all the rest are details about this. So we can start uh, uh, by uh, analyzing. Uh, so this is the general framework. So we can start by, uh, sorry, where's the folder here? Uh, by analyzing the, the first steps. Uh, so what we are doing at the very beginning. Hmm? So before even starting the project, before even started the implementation, we should answer a very easy question easy to ask at least not easy to answer uh, need finding so understanding the user needs and the system requirements which basically should be the same so the system requirements or the description of what the system should do should be equal or should map very very closely with the, what the users wants or what the user needs this phase is called need finding in the ACI jar jargon. So uh, finding the needs of the users. We need as engineers to structure a process in order to understand what are the needs of the users. And we need to use some tools, some uh, solutions, uh, some methods for extracting the, these needs, okay? We cannot just uh, make hypotheses, we need to extract them. So we are in the first uh, phase of our uh, process, right? 
finding potential user needs. Uh, of course, we are not uh, uh, solving every need of every user, but we need to identify a group of users and try to understand uh, what are their needs in a specific condition, in a specific case. So if I'm working, I don't know, in public transportation, my users will be the, uh, the drivers of the buses, maybe, or the passengers of the bus, or the controllers of the bus, different types of users that are interacting with the same environment. And they have different needs. For example, the passenger will need to find a seat to sit down very comfortable, or they need to, to get uh, down at the, at the right place without uh, having to push too many people to get out. I don't know. Hmm? So different people in different contexts uh, have different needs. Uh, needs uh, or they want. So the, there is a sort of blur between needing and wanting. Uh, they are very similar. Uh, actually, wanting is something more, uh, say, conscious. Uh, I think that they want something, and they need something more in conscious, where I, really I want that, but I, I don't. I, I'm not able to express that, uh, say, with words, uh, because it's something that is below my level of, uh, of understanding. But for, for us, uh, they are very similar in the, in the, in the process of, of extraction. And so uh, this also tells us that, first of all, we need to define who are the users. So we cannot start any human computer uh, user center design or your computer interaction task without knowing who are my users. Not in the name. I don't need uh, whether they're called uh, John or Jack uh, or Phil uh, or, or, or whatever. Uh, not the exact uh, identity, OK? I will never build a system tailored on three people, OK? But they cannot also uh, not even be too, too, too generic. All the males, no. All the Italians, no. They're not a user group. They are too large and too diverse to be a user group. They are not sharing something, some common needs in the way that we can solve them with a computer system. So uh, first of all, we need to define our target. Who are the users that are going to use my system? And uh, if you are too large, too general, probably you don't have a good idea in mind because it's something that will uh, no, uh, help everything. Everybody, no, it doesn't exist. Uh, a child of 10 years uh, has very different needs uh, and desires from uh, um, a, a boy of 18, uh, from a man of 30, from an elderly of 70. Okay, uh, the, the, the jobs uh, that they are doing, the, uh, so they're, the, you need to specify actually, imagine you want to sell something, uh, who are the people that are going to buy it? And if you're saying this is something that everybody will will buy, you are sure that it will you will fail. Okay, just from the market point of view, you cannot satisfy everybody's needs with one product. But we need to restrict it even farther, not just who is which is our user group, but what are the tasks that this user group is doing. So, for example, uh, who are the users? Students? No, it's too large. University students or uh, high school students. There are two different groups uh, that are very different. They are students. Uh, you know, if you go to the demographics, uh, to the statistics, uh, they are all classified under the label students. Uh, but uh, they have very different uh, lives. During their day, they do things differently. They, are, uh, they have um, an organization of the day which is totally different. And they need different things. So um, in the day, in the generic day, of a or one of these users, what are the tasks uh, that we are interested in? What are the tasks? Uh, uh, that are, are we interested in um, making them uh, study better or travel to university better or making lunch together? I don't know. There are different moments, different tasks. Uh, and uh, we see how, they, how are they doing this task today? And uh, how can we improve? Uh, uh, what, do, what do they need to make it better? Okay, what's the context in which they are doing it? Are, uh, right now, they are doing some tasks uh, and they're doing it in this way because there's something around them that mm, you know, uh, forced them or 
suggested them to act in some way. So we need to understand what they are doing. We need to understand why they are doing that, so what the, the context in which it's happening, in order to make a proposal for something better. So the idea is, uh, well, uh, you are making a lot of words, uh, but I can just knock a door to a student and say, how can I make your study better? Um, they will, of course, not reply because it's not their job <laughs> to, or it's not the user's job to tell you the specification of your system. It's your job as a designer to discover some way of making your user happier. And so uh, the user doesn't have the knowledge or the, the, the understanding. Eh? Uh, so it's our job to basically know our users, which is the first predicament, the first commandment of human computer interaction. Now, the guru here is saying, know your users is the first. Unless you have this, uh, we cannot do anything useful afterward. So who are or who will be the users of the system? Maybe we are redesigning a part of the system, so we already have some users, or we are imagining something new, and so we have some potential future users in mind. Who are them? They uh, are they of the same type, all students, or some students, some are teachers. Uh, so there are different subgroups inside the, the wider uh, user group. What's their age? What's their experience? What their experience with technology, which is one aspect, and what's their experience with the task that they are doing, which is a completely different way, huh? a, dif a completely different information. So we, we must always split, analyze the categories in, until these categories are uniform enough uh, to to be to be analyzed. And always remember that you, me, you, we are not good users. We are not representative of how the user thinks think, and how the user behave. There's only one exception. OK, by chance, if you are representing the needs of maybe some developers, we are also developers in a way. If we are uh, representing the needs of some students, OK, we are also students. But it's very dangerous to play a double role of designer and student at the same time. OK. So always think that the, the, you are not part of the users, of any user group. There will be something else. Don't project your preferences into the preferences of the user group uh, to which you belong, OK? Um, so all the, the skills, knowledge, attitude, and so on uh, of, of the designers and developers are normally different from those of your users. Don't make this the, is the one of the biggest mistakes that you can do. OK, it's even worse than doing no usability work. It's doing usability, assuming that uh, you know the user. It's, it's, it's worse than not doing anything at all, because you will do uh, really damages. Hmm? If you're doing some work for some client, uh, so we all need to, to live and to have some money. And so we are maybe in a, in a development company that is doing some work, and you have a client, somebody who's paying you. Okay. Uh, to develop a system for their employees, for example, or for their uh, customers. Uh, the client uh, is not uh, a representative user. User, you, um, the you know the the boss of, a, of an office doesn't is not representative for the work that the employees working in that office will do. So, if you need to understand, if you need to build a system for the employee of some person. Uh, you must uh, know your users, the employee users. The boss will tell you, but I know what they need. Okay, this is a, it's a lie. It's a big lie. The boss never knows what are the real needs of the people doing the job. The manager doesn't know what the, the people working for him are, are doing. The director is not uh, uh, aware of what the people in the office is doing, and so on. They all believe. Honestly, they believe they do know what their people are doing, but they not. They don't. Okay, really, they see what actions maybe they are doing, but not their needs, not how they could do better. Okay, uh, if you really speak to a person doing the work, that we, we, they will give you a totally different picture from their manager. Hmm. So always seek the actual users that will use the system. This is also a difficult step. No, 
if you are doing some design for some client uh, telling them i need to find some to speak or to work with some of your users uh, they will uh, counter that they will say well, you don't need that i will tell you the specification i will tell you what you need to know but until you find uh, the real users to talk to mm, the information you will have will not be useful uh, for you and so we need to go to talk uh, in talking some way to the final users and there are different instruments for talking to the users so we already said that we cannot just go there and ask uh, what do you need or what do you want okay what do you need more money okay uh what do you want uh, holidays mm -hmm. they don't fit too much they will never tell or they will tell you just something very very specific oh i would like this button here to be a bit larger because i use it 10 times a day okay but this is not something that you can build a system on you know something that you can analyze the requirements for okay so we need to have instruments where we are not asking explicitly the user what they want because it's not the job to understand it uh, but at the same time we can extract the information and we can discover what they would really need even if in sometimes they are not aware of that okay so we'll see some of these instruments uh, uh in in the next slides in the next hour or so um for talking to users in a structured way in order to be able a to get uh, good information and b not to influence them with what we think or sorry with what we think they want yes if i talk to a person this person Maybe I'm an external consultant going there and you're just a clerk doing your job and this consultant is coming to you and he's asking you questions. Uh, okay, the first thing you do is to make him happy. And so if the, the consultant is asking you, do you, would you like to have a menu here with some action? Yes, yes, I would like it very much. They will tell it because they make you happy. And they, they, you know, they, they feel also they feel intelligent. Then they come out as good people because they are collaborative and so on. All these psychological issues, you know, it's a stupid example, but in real life examples, uh, all these psychological issues, uh, uh, are, um, if we don't manage them correctly, we risk of getting the wrong information. And so we are building a system starting on some ground uh, data, ground information that is totally wrong. And so we also need methods to talk to users to avoid these pitfalls, these problems. and or so talking and uh, watching or talking or watching users uh, or watching is also a way of understanding how the users behave just uh, observing looking without asking without talking too much okay let me just sit with you and see and uh, and uh, have a look at how you are working let me just uh, maybe uh, make a movie of what you are doing and then i will study the movie later on there are methods uh, for doing that so that also without uh, um, talking without uh, asking you to give me your opinion your impression or your desires i will just learn what you are doing and maybe i will understand better why you are doing some things in some way maybe if you see somebody else doing something you will uh, learn that you will uh, immediately discover that every person has their own way of doing something I don't know if you ever had the experience of uh, editing a document uh, with some of your friends you know in word for example microsoft word you're editing something and uh, it's always a, a terrible experience because uh, you would do something in a way maybe you do cut, uh, cut, cut and paste with a drag and drop and he's doing that with ctrl c and ctrl v and the other one is doing that with the um with the toolbar uh, icons uh, and okay there are <laughs> many ways and the, the one is just copying and then deleting it or uh, for your so you are we are all doing the same action we are all reaching the same goals in different ways and each one of us feels that their way their way is better because for them it's more comfortable there may be reasons for some of them is a interaction they are more experienced with so they need more uh, accelerator more faster uh, actions some for some others are not so expert and so they need some visible um i don't know icon to use to highlight what they are doing and so on so it's also important to see why to understand why they are doing something and seeing maybe the opportunity of making it better of uh, 
simplifying or uh, or making the interface simpler or even more complex so they can reach more functionality uh, that, that they would need uh, and they currently maybe are doing by hand or doing uh, you know into uh, in a complex uh, in a comp in a long way with a long sequence of steps and so on so we are observing without disturbing basically the users and finally we need to discuss with them to discover why they are behaving in some way so if this is the good way okay otherwise if we can improve it we will have some information for us so uh, at the end of this kind of process uh, we will have more information about what the users want uh, there is one case when uh, it's very difficult uh, to to reach uh, real users uh, and in that case we can imagine our user will behave this is very dangerous of course because our imagination should not run wild should be based on some uh, analysis of how you know similar people will behave um, and so there's a process uh, we, we 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 are not uh, exploring it too much in this course uh, of building a sort of imaginary users we call them personas uh, um that uh, we they, they will be our friends uh, no you know when uh, when we were childs uh, when we were children we all had, we all had an imaginary friend okay and we knew everybody about this imaginary friend uh, it's uh, if it was taller or, or shorter than us uh, the color of their hair what the what games they liked and so on okay it's the same here with persona we are just building imaginary friends uh, that will be part of our set of target users the only problem is that they don't really exist so we can imagine what they would reply in that context but this is a, in the in the case where we are really in in the condition where we cannot uh, get in touch with the users uh, well, this is one technique that uh, sometimes uh, uh, can be useful okay uh, techniques so we have clear we have the, our goal is clear okay uh, understanding what users want uh, what are some methods uh, we are we selected say to to say some more information about some of these uh, methods need, need finding methods okay they are not all the possible ones uh, they are just ones that uh, you know give us a, 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 a broad idea of the different techniques uh, and some of them uh, uh, will be useful for us even in uh, in our project of course so first of all first of all observation so i want to learn about my user group so first of all let's go and look at them huh? like this uh, uh, proverb saying you can observe a lot just by watching so first of all let's go and watch them hmm? and take note of what uh, uh, we are doing and this is a is a technique that is starting from uh, um, the so-called eth ethnographic observation. You know, this ethnographic observation is a technique that was developed where uh, people went to uh, primitive cultures, primitive tribes, uh, and trying to understand how they worked. Okay, so I cannot, I can't just uh, go to a primitive tribe and go to their boss or whatever they are and ask, okay, let's tell me what are the rules of your society. Okay, they will never work, of course. Probably you will get cooked or killed. Um, uh, these people had uh, developed some methods for actually trying to um, get in touch with some strange environment, uh, strange culture, strange different behavior, and try to uh, obtain data in our case to design or redesign the interface in their case was to study the, the society uh, without uh, uh, by so extracting information and not by influencing the users okay so for for understanding and observing a user first of all we need to learn the language of the user of course if, if you go to a to a tribe in the, in the middle of africa you need to learn that language because you don't otherwise you don't understand what they're doing uh, of course, even if they are speaking Italian or English, but they are, I don't know, workers in a in a chemical factory, 
uh, you will first lead, need to learn the language uh, of the chemical factory uh, because otherwise they are will, whenever they're talking about what they are doing uh, which are the most important information for you you will not understand the word so first of all the observer must understand what they are doing and the environment in which they're working you cannot just you can just go there in the morning and pretend that you can observe everything you must first learn what they were learning uh, what uh, how they are working in a way uh, and then you go there and you listen and you observe actually sometimes you may ask questions and clarification so can you explain me what what you're doing right now uh, why did you do this before that other action very simple questions to try to understand better what they are doing and why they are doing that don't we obsessive of course and uh, um, and not interrupt their, their flow of words. But while you are there, they are doing their regular job. They are not uh, under interview, or you're not. Uh, no, just you just go there and observe people doing their their thing, their their actions. And whenever there's something, some point that is interesting for you to notice, uh, you can ask some questions in a very uh, non-invasive way as much as possible. And during this observation. Uh, we should try to take notes okay so that we can later on try to analyze them and find in patterns because maybe today i'm observing you and tomorrow i'm observing different persons every person is different but what you want to build is a system that tries to fill to fulfill the needs of different people in the same group not just of person a or person b and so it will take several days with several people doing different tasks and so you need to have some information uh, to compare the results. Uh, maybe you can have an audio video recording, but in many cases, the audio video recording is just for backup uh, because it will take enormous amount of time to review the video of the or maybe one week of, of, of uh, observation. Okay, it's too much. We are not going, going to do that probably. So it's better maybe to take notes in some way or just at least, okay, in this moment, something interesting was happening. We will mark the time and then you will review the video only on that uh, portion of time. Uh, this kind of observation uh, has some risks, of course, so a risk of getting the wrong information. For example, you're observing a person doing a job, but if you don't understand very well the job is doing, uh, you risk of misunderstanding what he's doing. So he's doing something because which is might be very important and for you it was not very important because you didn't understand the nature of the task. So you are learning how people is doing are doing things, but without only after you learned you can appreciate what they did. So we are always we are always working with a partial knowledge, and so our observations are always to be validated later on, maybe by somebody who's expert. The risk is uh, that people under observation will behave differently. And this is not a risk, it's a certainty. Of course, if somebody is watching you, you will not act in the same way as you were in your normal daily routine. And uh, uh, we should try to minimize this effect, this effect because otherwise we are observing a different behavior from the one that we are want to understand. And, and of course, maybe sometimes there's inform important information which is uh, in some way doesn't, uh, is not immediately evident, is not immediately visible. And so that's why on top of this uh, general model of eth ethnographic observation, we have some, some hints and some, some suggestions of how to behave. Uh, first of all, in our notes, uh, okay, in our uh, documents that we take uh, in, in the observation uh, task, uh, we should try to uh, mark this kind of information. This, this question, these are important questions that we are asked ourselves, okay, while we are observing you doing something. Um, what do people do now with the, with the first uh, question, okay? I'm doing some lecture here in uh, distance learning. So if you want to come here in my house and observe me, I'm doing, some actions, I'm using some programs and I, I have some objects uh, uh, and even outside the camera screen probably I have some, some objects around me, some space and so on. Uh, so 
uh, if you want to do it better, uh, you should see that maybe before starting the lecture, I need to open at least five different windows and position them in a given way. Okay, this is something that I'm doing now. You cannot see it, uh, you cannot know it unless you come here on my side and look at what I'm doing because the final result is not enough. And so this, is a, for example, is a painful process to have everything set up in the right way and you always risk of forgetting something, okay? Um, and so um, how, just uh, you know, the, the, the list of actions that the people are doing now uh, and what uh, values and goal do people have? So they are doing to, a comp to, to reach a goal, to be um, proud of, of themselves when they are doing something. Okay, so what are the most important things that people value about themselves? Okay. For me, it's important to finish many tasks in a day. And for me, it's important to uh, do things in a very ordered and, and, and clean way. And for me, it's something different. It's important to be good friends with everybody and so on. Uh, so there may be different values and different goals that uh, shape the way people are doing things so we are trying to infer okay uh, what are the important things that people think they are good if they accomplish these goals and think their actions are good because they you know they they bring uh, some kind of values which some people uh, say consider better than other than other type of values uh, how are these activities uh, um, fit into, okay, there's, there's a big word here, ecology, but just means uh, the task of one person is linked to the tasks of other people. How do they relate? Okay, uh, these other people could be our users still in our target group, or could be some other people that are not our current target group, but the direction or their interaction with the other users uh, will be important for the accomplishment of the task. Uh, we will discover that people are different. So some things are done similarly for different people and some things are done in a different way. Uh, this should be preserved, of course. People should have uh, continue to have the possibility of doing things in a different way, uh, but we should notice them. Okay, this is a difference. Is this a significant difference? difference or this just that happens that people prefer different ways of doing the actions and maybe other contexts and some actions happens always uh, uh, after lunch time people are doing this kind of task so why are you doing this task always after lunch time oh because it's a bit dizzy after the lunch and so this is easy to do so i decided to to do it every day at this time okay this is one possibility okay there's one pattern that maybe we can exploit uh, we are not yet, you see that we are not mentioning the features of the system. We are just trying to understand the users. Later on, after we understand them, we can propose something new. Okay. In observing, uh, we should always uh, try to, or we will discover, there is a, a big, big breakup between what they call process and practice. Process is uh, how things are officially supposed to happen. So if you ask uh, to you know, the director of an office and say, okay, how does uh, you know, uh, sending an invoice happen? And they will describe you the process. So first, the, I don't know, the, the order is taken out from the ordering system and then it's printed and then it's stamped, uh, then it's scanned. Uh, it will give, it will give, it will, it's checked by, by another person. And then we, we load it into the system and we send it to the, I don't know, to the um, supplier and so on. They will tell you how, in theory, things are supposed to happen, which is different from how, in the reality, things are really managed by the people. Because people maybe, okay, don't want to follow this process because there's one step which is really slow. So they try to delay it to the, until, as much as possible. So maybe to try to make many smaller tasks and then only once the slow and complex task that it will take some time for them. People always develop in their daily lives uh, some tricks, uh, some workarounds, uh, some simplification, something which is learned from experience. You can only learn it when you're, you know, if you do go, go into the job and your coworker is telling me here, there, I tell you how to do things or just yourself observe them and say, oh, but they're doing something different from the official way. 
but maybe it's not so bad because it saves some time or it's uh, saves some errors and so on. Um, so it's uh, since you, we are thinking about a computer system you know, for helping them, a computer system can only uh, you know, provide you some not okay a limited amount of flexibility because it has of course its own interface and so we should build the system take into account the official process but also take into account the real practice because if we follow too much the process we will build a system which is too rigid it does it does everything by the book of course but it doesn't uh, does anything by the people uh, in the way the people are expecting it to do so it will feel like a very boring and bureaucratic system that you just need to follow. Until yesterday, I was able to do my job very quickly with this set of tricks. And from tomorrow, you're selling me a new system that will force me to take a longer way because that's the official way. Okay. But maybe there's no reason that should be the only way or the official way. We should recognize that people are clever in their work and people try to find better ways of doing things in their specific work. And so these are the, the, the warnings and the information that we need to, to, to extract. And uh, uh, there are basically two big, broad distinctions, two big ways of actually practically doing these kind of observations. OK, um, controlled observation. Uh, control observation means uh, uh, we set an artificial observation space, maybe a lab. We come people to our lab and ask them to do their task. Maybe I want to help people uh, cooking, for example. So I invite uh, 10 people into our lab where we have kitchens, where we have ingredients and so on, and we give them some tasks and we see how they behave. Uh, and it's easy to say it's a scientific method in a way, no? because it's a re reproducible. Everybody has the, the same kitchen, everybody has the same ingredients and so on. Uh, we can also analyze quantitative, quantitative data, compare the errors, compare the, the performance and so on. Hmm? Uh, and we know exactly uh, what, uh, what we want to observe and we can plan the tasks that we are proposing in order to be you know, the, for, for easy you know, collection of the information that we need. Um, but we are observing people out of their normal context. And so we will never be sure whether the behavior we observe is uh, the real one, is the natural one. Okay. For that, uh, we would need a sort of a naturalistic observation uh, we call them so observing the user in the wild of course we are not <laughs> observing wild people in the in the forest but in there uh, while we say in the wild we we mean in their uh, normal environment in their daily environment okay so instead of inviting people into our lab to do some kind of experiment we go to their people workplaces and try to study them and to to observe them and so we, it's much more likely that we can discover the daily problems uh, of their life, the difficulties, the, the, the points in which they are wasting time or they're wasting opportunities or they're making errors, okay? Or they're not listening to their customers and so on and try to understand why and then try to come up with ideas on how to improve them. Uh, only at this point, okay, we can think about the features of the system. Only when we, when we understood that the people doing some task are not doing that in the best way. We can identify some points that can be made better. Made better. So the user needs, no, what we call them, the user needs at the beginning, something that the user would be happy to have because they would make their work in their own way, but better. So we are not changing or forcing them to change uh, how they're working or how they organize their activities. We are just making them better, smoother, faster. That, and of course, we can propose down that something that is smoother and faster only if we understand what are the blocking points uh, of the current situation. You understand that for doing this kind of uh, observation, we, ne we, have, we need to have a quite narrow set of users. Okay, it cannot be all the 
uh, all the teenagers or something like that okay and we need to have a, a task which is well defined that we want to observe and a, a kind of user which is quite boxed which is quite well defined uh, that we want to uh, understand how they behave um, uh, okay, so in this case, of course, this kind of observation is more qualitative, okay, because we don't have uh, 10 people that will do exactly the same task. We will go and observe 10 different people which are, they are doing their own tasks in their own environment. So, of course, there will be differences. Uh, so, the results that we get are more qualitative, is, are more open for discussion, understanding why one person is uh, uh, organized their space, organized their time in a different way, which is different from another. You, would, you will not have uh, you know, numerical data to say A is faster than B because they are doing different things. But maybe it's, uh, this qualitative approach is also useful, more useful for having new ideas. So you're not just trying to measure how efficient a task is, but uh, uh, helping you to think of new ways of doing things or proposing things. Hmm? Uh, in some cases, uh, it's difficult, uh, but to, to find uh, a good number of representative users, uh, depending, of course, on the user category, but uh, you need to find them, you, they need to, you know, uh, accept that you, that you can go and observe them, and, uh, uh, and you need to travel and spend time on one by one, uh, and so um, will, it's more expensive in terms of time, and it's more difficult to have uh, large number of users. So probably in this case, uh, the number of users that we observe will be two, three, four, okay, to start with, okay. Um, and of course, there will be a lot of external variables of, of external context. Uh, uh, you know, for example, in the cooking example, maybe you go to one person which is a very small kitchen and another which is a, a very big one with a lot of different uh, devices. And of course, there will be no similarities uh, between their tasks and so but it's just an external effect you cannot control okay so it's very difficult to have a result that are really comparable but you will see that if you try, start to try with this approach i, I remember you know the the work that uh, your your friends uh, last year were doing uh, even with uh, the, an observation of two people you know, every, every group observed only two people sometimes three uh, they came up uh, with interesting observations about uh, what these people were doing, why they were doing that, uh, and especially ideas uh, or, or, or um, they noticed things that they could not think before. Okay, always, I, I, I will never think uh, about that possibility. Uh, when you interact with a user to observe them, you have basically two options. So imagine you are trying to do basically some naturalistic observation. You go there in their natural environment and you want to observe them. You have two options. One, let's say it's uh, becoming part of the wall. So you go there, you just tell people, don't bother me, no? okay? Think I'm not here, do your thing normally. You just stand there in the corner and observe without interacting as much as possible. Okay, you just observe and take notes. So people at the beginning, they will be quite, uh, you know, uh, they will look at you with a stranger eyes, uh, say, what is this person doing? But after 10 minutes, uh, probably they, you will become part of the world. They will not notice you anymore after 10 minutes, half an hour or whatever, okay? Um, so you will be able to observe them without uh, disturbing, them, without changing their behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you won't have many options to to understand the reasons of their behavior. You can observe a more realistic behavior, but you cannot go there and, and ask, uh, what, why are you doing this? Because by choice, okay, in this case. Uh, and so the idea is uh, um, scheduling some time afterwards. So maybe you can say, okay, at the end, oh, I will observe you for this morning, and then the end of the afternoon, I will offer you a coffee, and can we have a chat about what, what I observed today? Hmm? So there are, there, you should have some moment in which you can ask for information that you took note that there was something interesting and you want to understand it better. Uh, in this case, it's also better to avoid video recording because people will know that they are recorded and they will behave more officially, more formally, according to the process and not according to the practice. So let's make it informal. You go there, you observe you, with your eyes, with your mind, and with your, and with your notes. Hmm? So it's a very manual task. Okay, it's not something that can be automated or whatever. You need to go there and understand. 
another option for observation is uh, uh, what we call becoming one of them okay like an apprentice like a new employee say okay for these two days i will work with you i will do the same work as you i will go maybe through the same training process as you go when you uh, when you start uh, working there so i will learn exactly doing your work and they will try to work side by side with you and maybe after uh, sometimes they uh, they will feel you as a part of their team they know you are not they know that you are going away but you know uh, intuitively psychologically you are one of them because you are doing the same work you have learned the same processes and uh, you are helping them like when you have a you know a, an internship uh, which is one one new person in the group uh, they are they are learning but they are part of you okay um, and you can observe the practices uh, inside uh, and you can of course validate your observations directly with the users okay so if you are if, if you're playing the, the intern game like you are an intern there uh, you can ask but wh why are, are we doing this or how should i do this job okay you just pretend to be learning or pretend to be working with them and this is, an, is a good and effective trick okay of uh, of getting information from them on a on a peer-to-peer -peer basis of course these are always approximations okay you will never get the truth you can never read the minds of people but there are different techniques uh, that we can adopt uh, you know, to try to extract this information that can be uh, useful for us um, and what kind of note what kind of information okay should we uh, try to uh, extract okay we can have some subjective data uh, can, uh, Enrico is saying I could ruin the job if I'm not compet competent uh, of course uh, but uh, any apprentice uh, any intern uh, has some risk there so they will ne never give the keys of the new no, of the nuclear nuclear central uh, or the nuclear reactor to to a, to a novice person okay but you can go along and see and look okay come with me and I will do the work uh, and just you 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 will hold my my screwdriver when I well while I'm doing the re the real work. But then while it's working, you are chatting. Okay, um, so I'm not doing the work in their place. Like like okay, a person that is hired in in day number one, and so is going along with other people. Um, so while doing this, uh, I said we should take notes. We should uh, you know, try to to track uh, our understanding. Uh, this understanding could be subjective, subject to me, to the observer. Okay, so an impression that I get, I, I think that something can be improved. Okay, this is my impression. It's an impression after the observation, not an impression that I had before. It should not be a preconception. Okay, it's a, an impression coming from an observation. I can have some uh, um, do some questions to the user, some having some. Uh, um, uh, feeling okay uh, how do you feel about this task good not so good uh, or also maybe informally i don't need to make a, a formal question because it scares people but uh, having some feedback from the person in terms of uh, good not so good uh, well uh, very well and so on i could have uh, maybe a, a, a summary report some something i write to, to summarize not to forget I remember that these, these observations could take several days and you could do the observation on different places so you really want something to remember or to store the information you get on day one because on day 15 probably you will uh, you will have forgot it if you don't write in some way and uh, it's also interesting to observe uh, some strange objects or some strange things that are in the workplace okay so if you go there onto a desk and you see that they have some post-it notes they are very important what's right what's on these post-it notes some instructions some passwords some information some information that they need to know so badly that they wrote it uh, on a post-it note and so why is this information not available in the system okay uh, so of or if an object or a given document is in a given place you know, maybe very accessible everybody's looking at that uh, why is that so the also the layout of the physical space can tell you a lot about the information okay of course we are building the computer system so we are only managing information 
but some information is not in the computer. Some information is in the head of the people, but also some information is stored in the environment around you. You are not realizing it, but the, the, the location where you put your phone, the location where you put your paper folder or, or tells you something about what information you need at different times and when you access this information. Um, and of course, you can have some more objective data so that people are telling you the anecdotes uh, maybe about critical incidents. Oh, that day where something bad happened. Uh, oh, just tell me. Okay. Uh, of course, maybe this, it was a one one shot incident, but uh, uh, by analyzing them, you, you, that you can maybe understand uh, which something is not wrong. Wrong is a too strong uh, word, but can be improved because you can prevent some error or you can uh, design uh, you know, a, a leaner or simpler uh, procedure. Hmm? Which errors did you observe directly in that day? People doing the mistake, maybe swearing that they, 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 they did something wrong. So it's, you know, it's normal no? in, the, in the workplace or in, the, in, the, in your daily life that you do something wrong. Okay, what did you do something wrong? Why? How could, they, how could they, have you prevented that error? Huh? That's our job trying to find opportunities for making the activity better and uh, you work around okay something that you didn't do by the book you didn't do by the process you did it in a different uh, method uh, with a different trick and so you found a better way of solving something which is not supported by the current system for example and that's where one place where we can uh, let's say um, ease your life when you can fulfill your needs because you already solve the needs yourself by finding a workaround. So we can integrate that in the system and make it make the system better for you. So you don't need to work around or work aside the system on your own because the system will understand how you are doing things and will help you doing the things your way, not by the process, but by your way. Hmm? Um, so these are the kind of information that we are trying to extract. Of course, uh, depending on the specific context, uh, it would be different. Uh, um, it would be easier or more difficult because maybe the tasks are more uh, standardized or more free. But if you define very well the tasks that, that you are observing, it will be more easy. It will be uh, yes easier to to identify which are these uh, these uh, these points that the, that come out to your attention basically you know? just by the fact that you are sitting there and looking at some other people doing things uh, you will notice a lot of details because in your mind you are just observing and trying to spot some points hmm? so you will find which is uh, you will uh, get a lot of information that you don't imagine at the beginning okay so this is something that uh, requires a very little participation from the user. Uh, of course, they need to allow you to be there. You, they need to allow you to, to observe them, but they don't need to do anything special. Maybe answer your questions once in a while or at the end of the day, but it's just something, okay, uh, just a chatting for half an hour with a new person there. Okay, it's nothing so special. Uh, there are other methods uh, that we start uh, seeing the, tomorrow, for example, that needs uh, uh, more involvement, more a more structured, uh, um, let's say, interaction with the users, uh, which goes, of course, deeper to observation, and maybe they should be better done on a second step after we did some observation, understood the big problems or the big issues where you want to work. Then we want to understand more, and then we will need to work with the user, not just by observing them, but by working together to extract more information. So for example, uh, uh, the next uh, topic would be the, the next techniques would be taking diaries or, uh, sorry, or, or making interviews uh, with that. Uh, that are something which is more structured where they need the collaboration of the users. But this is something that we are going to talk uh, uh, about uh, tomorrow morning. In the in the second uh, say part uh, of this uh, of this topic, okay. So if you don't have any question, I think we've reached our time limit, and uh, I will uh, defer you to tomorrow class to to finish uh, this uh, this topic and maybe to have some discussion. I'll, I'll always start thinking about these activities in the 
especially about the user groups and the tasks when you think about your project. Okay, always ask what are who are my users and what are they doing. And try only to focus on these two questions and not on, on what the system is going to do and what are the features of the system. It's too early for doing that. Okay, we first need to find the user and the task in which we want to help the user. Then we will apply need finding to find that we discover how we can improve the task for the user. But right now we cannot do that yet. We only need to define uh, users and the tasks, the activities that we want to improve. How to improve them will be later. We need two weeks for doing that, okay? Um, and we need to work and do uh, apply these techniques. We cannot do that just by thinking or by imagining, right? So don't be afraid of not knowing what you will do as a project. They will come, come out. It will be you know, half of the time will be just spent for understanding which project you need to do. Right now, only the users and the tasks are the important thing to focus on, okay? So just try to remember that for uh, for your submission of the project idea and the group composition. Okay, so I'm running long, sorry, I will shut up and uh, good evening to everybody and see you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.